Hey guys, thanks for joining me on episode four of the Rogue HQ. In the last episode, we insulated the building and then we threw up the interior walls. And in this episode, we're gonna do everything to those interior walls to prep them for drywall. That's gonna include running all of our electrical, our gas lines, and our air lines from our air compressor, as well as hooking up our radiant floor system. All right, so this is our radiant floor system and I love it. I know it looks super complex, but it's not all that complicated overall. So I'm gonna go ahead and run you through the process of how it works. So we've got thermostats that come into this pump controller. As a thermostat calls for heat, we've got two zones in this building, one for the back room and then one for the front garage. As one of those thermostats calls for heat, this pump controller triggers this pump and this primary pump, or one of the zone pumps and this primary pump to kick on. And what that does is this primary pump is going to cycle water through this hot water heater. And as that hot water heater senses a, a, a flow going through it, it's gonna heat that hot water up to 120 degrees. And then this pump is going to pull that hot water back through all of the tubes that are ran in that slab and heat that area. So this manifold was provided to us by the Radiant Floor Company. And the cool thing about it is that it came basically just like it is. We just had to assemble it with all the pumps and everything um, and then mount it to the hot water heater. So I set this hot water heater first onto some plywood backer here and then we mounted all of this to it. And then I had my, um, my plumber come and run all of these copper lines because I wanted it to look super cool. Um, ran all these copper lines back to our slab manifolds which we had embedded in the concrete slab um, with all of the tubing running through the concrete slab when we poured that. So after the plumber got everything hooked up, we came back and wired up this pump controller. And the way that that works is I've got an outlet here. I wired a metal box and then ran this, uh, ran this MC cable. And basically that's just exposed wiring that has this, um, this kind of like protective sleeve on it. Ran that to the pump controller. So this is gonna be a switch here. And that's gonna allow me to, if I need to service the unit, be able to just flip it on and off and make sure none of these pumps kick on while I'm servicing the unit. Um, so the, we've got power to this uh, pump controller from here. And then as the thermostats call for heat, they're gonna send power to these pumps. So we ran this uh, MC cable all the way to each one of these pumps and then secured it in place. Um, and it works out good. This is the second time doing it. I did it inside. And overall, this process isn't that hard once you figure out how these things go together. So the other thing that we've got going on is since this is a gas hot water heater, we needed to make sure that the carbon monoxide created from that um, was exhausted outside. Now normally you would need to run two lines, one for the intake and one for the exhaust, but we have a big enough space here that our intake is sufficient as far as like the cubic feet of air that we have in this room um, that this hot water heater requires. So we just needed to vent out the exhaust, which we did so with PVC pipe and drilled a hole in the outside of the, the building and just vented that right out, no problem. All right, so when it came to electrical, uh, I knew that I wanted to go ahead and run everything in 12-2. Now, if you don't know anything about electrical, when somebody refers to wire as 12-2 or 14-2 or 14-3, what they're referring to is the gauge of the wire, which is gonna be 12 or 14 or even 10. Um, the higher the number, the thinner the wire. Uh, and less of a load that you can take on that wire or through that wire. So 12-2 is kind of uh, a little bit beefier wire that we can run like a 20 amp circuit on and so on and so forth. And then two or three, like the 12-2, the second half of that number, 
the two means there's two wires in there. A three wire would be what you would use for like a, a three-way switch or something like that. So 12-2 is what we use throughout most of the, the, uh, the workshop. And what I did was we ran outlets about every four feet and then wherever I thought that we were going to be needing a lot of out outlets and power, we ended up doubling those up. We put some lower and some higher as well. The other thing that I did was we ran two outlets, one in the workshop as well as one out in the garage um, that is ran in 10-2 and that is a much beefier cable that is going to be able to, to power something like a welder, like a 50 amp circuit um, for a welder, uh, something that needs a lot of power. You need a thicker gauge wire for those, those kinds of tools. When it came to wiring, I had never pulled wire before, and that's what they call this, is running, you nail up all your boxes, which is what I did on my own. And then uh, pulling the wire is something that I had never done before. So I was a little bit, uh, I just wanted some help. So luckily I know a, an electrician that lent me one of his employees, which is also a friend of mine, came over here and he pulled a bunch of wire for me. And then there was one day where I had some time and I was able to, to go through that process with him. And I learned a ton and it's really not as difficult as I, as I thought it was in the beginning. So he left me some work to do when he was done. Um, we ended up running all of the, the lights or most of the, the lighting ourselves. Uh, we had to pull a couple extra outlets and stuff like that. Um, but overall, I would say the process is a lot less intimidating once you've been able to do it with someone who knows what they're doing. Now the lights are all gonna be four foot LED shop lights and those are all direct wire. So basically we didn't run any junction boxes in our workspaces. Uh, we just laid down some wire from the ceiling uh, or the wire is hanging where we want that light fixture to be. So then once we get our drywall up, the drywallers will just poke a hole in the drywall, pull that wire through, and then we can uh, secure a light fixture to the ceiling, pull that wire through it, and then wire it internally so it's not hanging. Therefore, it doesn't collect any dust and stuff like that. Okay, so when the gas company came out originally, they installed a bracket right about there behind me because we knew we were gonna need natural gas for that hot water heater that is power or heating the, the radiant floor system. So we just have one line that we needed to run from there to the hot water heater. So running the flex line and everything over to the hot water heater was fairly easy, but when it came time to drill a hole in the side of my precious building, I wanted to make sure we got it right. So we've got inch and a quarter pipe coming off the bracket. We needed to mount a reducer to that and then figure out exactly where that hole was gonna be in the side of the building. Once we nailed that down and knew exactly where that was gonna be, we removed everything that was in the way and we drilled a hole into the building for that pipe to run through. With everything connected, we could pressurize the system and make sure that there was no leaks. And now it's ready for the gas company to come back and hang that meter. All right, so with all these holes in the side of the building, we needed to make sure that they were sealed up properly so that the rain and the exterior elements don't come inside and create problems. So that brings me to our sponsor for this video, DAP. We use their Dynaflex Ultra to seal all around all of those penetrations and make sure that rain doesn't become a problem for us. We also use their fire stop, and this is gonna be used anywhere electrical holes are drilled in the top or bottom plate of a wall. And basically what, that ha what happens is, um, if a fire is created inside of a wall, it's not gonna be able to go through those holes that are drilled through electrical and spread more rapidly. So thank you DAP for sponsoring this video. And if you wanna learn more about those products, make sure you check them out at dap.com. So one other thing that I wanted to do was I wanted to have a main air compressor that was large and in charge. Anyway, so we wanted to make sure that we ran lines from that main air compressor to different sources throughout this building um, for different tasks. So we've got two lines that are gonna be in the workshop and those are gonna be dedicated to pneumatic tools like nailers and so on and so forth. I've got one line that's gonna be a, a reel 
uh, well, most of them will be on reels. The reel in the garage is gonna be dedicated to more of like a um, inflating tires and servicing cars and stuff like that. So then we've got, we also ran a line to the, uh, the paint booth and that is gonna be for an HVLP sprayer. I needed to make the installation of this system very easy. So what we decided to run the tubing in was actually PEX and that's used for commonly for plumbing. But what we're using is power PEX. It's a little bit more durable and it's also a higher pressure rating. So this PEX is rated at 160 PSI at room temperature, which is more than we're ever gonna put on this compressor. Um, so it's perfect for the uses that we'll have. We'll be hovering around 100 PSI. So this is, is perfect. Everything clicked together with those quick connect uh, fittings. And then we ran hard line at every outlet so that as we mount to that pipe, uh, we'll have something sturdy uh, to mount to. All right, so that concludes episode four of the Rogue HQ. Once we get our inspections passed, we're gonna be hanging drywall and installing interior doors in the next episode. So make sure you stay tuned for that one. Until next time, be safe and happy building.